All right, everyone, welcome back to Cody's Lab. So today is gonna to be sort of a collab video with Toby from the channel Tybees. We both wanted to do videos on telescopes and so we figured we'd coordinate the release. I'll be sure to leave a link to her video and channel wherever it is that YouTube lets me leave links these days. Anyway, what I'm gonna be talking about is vaguely related to the famous Event Horizon telescope image that was released last uh, April of the black hole. I know, I'm extremely late to the game, but eh, it doesn't really matter. So basically what a telescope does is it collects photons of light from a wide area, focuses it down to a small spot, usually a sensor of some kind, all while preserving uh, direction information in order to create an image. Secondary hardware such as lenses can be used to magnify that image, it can be expanded digitally, and also the photons can be collected over a long period of time in order to generate an image which is brighter. In fact, the Hubble Space Telescope is so awesome because it can stare out into space unobstructed for weeks at a time and image incredibly faint objects. But no matter how long the optical hardware is allowed to collect photons for, how precisely it's able to focus them down, how good the uh, secondary equipment is, there is a fundamental limit to how much resolution it can get, and that is determined by the aperture size, how big the hole that it's looking through, or how big the mirror is, and the wavelength of light that it's observing. Shorter wavelengths and larger apertures generate clearer images. The reason for that is that light is kind of weird. Here's a quick little experiment you can try on your own. Wait till it's dark and find a bright light off in the distance cover it up with your finger or other object, and even though you are blocking the light entirely, some of the light is able to get around. You see, light behaves not like a particle shot off from the source, rather they travel as a wave, more like ripples in a pond. They expand out in all possible directions. And, like a wave, light is also able to bend around obstacles to some extent. As that uh, wave front washes over things, it has a chance to interact with matter. Also, thanks to relativity, things traveling at the speed of light experience no time nor distance. So be it your eyeball or some random rock halfway across the universe, as far as the photon's concerned, both are equally likely places to land. And when it does interact with something, that entire wave function collapses down to a single point where the energy and momentum is all delivered as if the light was a particle. Also unlike a wave, light does not appear to require any sort of physical medium in order to propagate. Weird, right? <laughs> it's probably a good time now to point out that I'm no expert in this. I'm just some guy that's read stuff on the internet and done a few rudimentary experiments at home. So what a telescope is really doing is it's taking that wave and focusing it down, increasing the amplitude at a certain spot in order to increase the probability of getting the photon to interact with the sensor. But okay, so what if when it's traveling the photon has some weird wavy properties? It's still interacting as a particle, where's the big problem? Well, the problem is, is between interacting and traveling from the source, if it passes through an opening, bounces off a mirror or something, which you kind of have to do in order to generate the image in the first place, it changes the wave in a way that sort of rewrites the information that the photon is carrying. You see, waves propagate not from the source, but rather from the last place that there was a wave. In the case of light, you have a disturbance in the magnetic field, creating a disturbance in the electric field, which creates a disturbance in the magnetic field, and so on. That means that if you take a section of the wave and cut it off by making it go through a telescope, that section of wave now wants to expand out and become a new source. Now, so long as that section of wave you're taking out is large compared to the wavelength, the distortion will be minimal. You hardly notice it in everyday life. If you talk to someone who knows more about this than I do, maybe a physicist, they'll probably tell you that it has something to do with the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Uh, basically, that the more precisely you know that the photon went through the hole, the less precisely you know the original direction. I have trouble getting my head around that, so I explain it in a way that I can understand. 
And of course, I can demonstrate this. If I take a telescope and constrict the effective aperture, you will start to notice it more and more. In fact, let's go do that. First, I need to find some place a little bit darker. Well, it's dark, but not really big enough for this, is it? Yeah, too much air currents. Perfect. This will do nicely. So I made up a little eye test chart here, and this is what we will be looking at through the telescope. And the telescope is sitting right there about 50 feet away. So here is the view through the telescope. As you can see, all of the letters are visible. Now, I'm going to restrict the light and basically make this into a smaller telescope. So here's the cover. As you can see, it's got loads of holes, but right now I've got them all covered except for this one large one here. So let's uh, see what we see through this camera now. Okay, so you can see it's much darker, so let me adjust the camera a bit to make it a bit more sensitive to light. Let it finish shaking, and we can still read pretty much everything still. Might be just slightly more blurry. When I place the two still shots side by side, you can indeed see that the 2 inch aperture does have a lower resolution than the 6 inch aperture did. It's most apparent when you look at the fine print on the bottom. Also something of note is that for all of these photographs I have locked the camera's sensitivity to light, the ISO, to 3200. The reason for that is that the sensitivity can actually alter the resolution of the image somewhat. Exposure length, however, does not alter the resolution, and so that is what I'm varying. Okay, so now I've covered up the big hole and uncovered this hole right here, which is substantially smaller. In fact, there's no way I'm going to be able to record video because it's just going to be too dim. I'm going to have to hold the shutter open for quite a while to get an image. Here is the image I acquired with the one half inch opening and a two second exposure length. It is now definitely apparent that the resolution has decreased. The bottom line is now unreadable. Uh, something that I should mention before I forget is that I'm triggering the camera remotely. During exposures I am standing far away from the telescope so as to not cause any vibrations. Also the focus is not changing because I'm only touching the telescope and camera in order to change out the lens cover. Okay, so now I'm going to cover that hole and at the same time uncover an even smaller hole. With a one quarter inch aperture only the top two lines are readable. And finally I'm going to uncover a very tiny hole right there. This is not much more than a pinhole. See if we can get any kind of image with that. With the 1 16th inch opening, the diffraction has become so significant that none of the lines are readable, and you can only vaguely see that there's even something written there. Now imagine that this tiny 1 16th inch aperture is the largest you can make a telescope. The best image you could take is what we have here. But what if you wanted a better image? Well, one thing we could try is observing a higher frequency of light. The greater the frequency, the less significant the diffraction will be. So now let's switch out the red light for a blue light of the same intensity. So here we are with the two images with the different colors placed side by side. If you look at the third line down, you can see that on the blue image, the F and the T are recognizable, whereas on the red image they are not. So the blue is better, but only slightly. And there's two reasons for that. One, the difference in frequency between red light and blue light is not that significant. The visible range of light is actually pretty narrow. And two, uh, since this camera was made by monkeys for monkeys, its sensitivity to blue light is lower. Or rather, I should say there is less blue light receptors per square millimeter in the camera's sensor. This experiment probably would have been a lot better if I were using a black and white camera. Okay, so what do we do if we can't build a bigger telescope or use a higher frequency of light? 
Well, as it turns out, there is a neat trick. If I open up another hole, produce a second source of identical light, the portions of the wave that are distorted, that are traveling in the wrong direction, cancel out, and the portion that is traveling in the correct direction, the direction the original wave was traveling, reinforces, so the information is more recoverable. So how about we run the experiment again, except this time I'll drill a whole bunch of holes. And, uh, this is, if anything, it's worse. I mean, the image is a lot brighter. Makes sense, it's got 30 times the collection area. But the resolution is not improved. This is due to my subpar drilling skills and the fact that the pattern of holes is not symmetrical. So the diffracted light is not canceling out properly. So, how about I try a more symmetric pattern? My drilling ability is still wanting, but hey, we have an improvement. I can read the top two lines now, even though none of the holes are any larger than the 1 16th of an inch. I imagine if you had a computer guided drill, this could be done a lot better. Now earlier I mentioned that atmospheric currents could be a problem. In fact, this is not the first time I've attempted this experiment. I first tried this outside looking at a building that was 12 kilometers away. I'll put a link to that video down in the description. When I used a ring of holes, the image was substantially dimmer and the resolution was not improved. This is due to variations in atmospheric density causing the photons to arrive at different times. I can recreate this effect by taping a piece of flat window glass, which doesn't block much light, over half of the holes. Now you can see the image is substantially dimmer and all of the resolution boost has been erased. The speed of light through glass is slower than that through air, so it delays the photons, getting them out of phase with each other, so that when they recombine at the sensor, they interfere destructively rather than constructively. So now, of course, what I'm doing here is different than what is done out in the wild. You see, at least for optical wavelengths, you would have two separate telescopes and the light from each would be sent down a tunnel of some kind to be combined at the sensor somewhere in the middle. This has the potential to give a resolution that a telescope of the size of the separation would produce. The thing is, it's incredibly difficult. The tunnel lengths have to be exactly the same. If they're off by just a little tiny bit, even if the temperature of the air in one I mean, they'd probably vacuum out all the air. To... <laughs> Even if it's just a little bit different, the effect is just destroyed. For the Event Horizon projects, they had telescopes spaced across the entire world, and in order to combine that light, you know, you can't have a tunnel that long, so what they did is they used radio waves, which are a little bit easier to record all of the phase information, get that data onto hard drives, and then bring it together and combine it using a supercomputer later. Now, of course, I am not going to pretend to have any kind of capability like that yet. If I had to kind of cheat and use a single large mirror in order to get the light to come together. But whether it's sending the light through a tube, combining it mathematically in a computer, or bouncing it off of one larger mirror, the effect is pretty much the same. I'm pretty happy with what I've got. It took a lot of work and oh, <laughs> it is just astonishing to me how resilient the telescope is. Even though I only had a tiny pinhole open, maybe less than a thousandth of the total collection area, it was still able to generate at least a recognizable image. And speaking of that resiliency, I would like to direct you guys' attention to Toby's channel, where she talks about a telescope that was shot multiple times with a gun, and yet is still being used for astronomical research. I'm sure you guys will enjoy that. Hope you enjoyed mine as well. I'll see you next time. People look at me like I'm such a weirdo. I don't know why.